Mankind as a whole is particularly good at forgetting things that we should remember. Take Dr. Joseph Warren as an example. Here is a man who likely helped forge the America we know today, but if I were to ask a random stranger on the street who he was, I'd be met with shrugs and blank stares. Warren's history began in 1759 when he graduated from Harvard College. In the months that followed, he took to medicine and surgery in Boston. It was around this time that Warren's interest began to shift towards that of the political, and he eventually became so politically involved that he dared to speak out against the king by writing his dissenting views about the Stamp Act in various newspapers. After his publication, Warren went on to join a Masonic Lodge and found himself discussing politics with the likes of John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and other members of the Sons of Liberty. By 1774, Warren had joined forces with Adams and had opted to work on the Committee of Correspondence, which helped establish the first political union among the 13 colonies. When Adams left Boston to attend the First Continental Congress, Warren stayed behind to command radical forces. After Adams' return and the Boston Tea Party, Warren helped to set up a provincial congress in Boston and opted to chair a committee specifically for gathering arms and training the militia. On April 18, 1775, Warren learned through Boston's Revolutionary Underground that the British troops were preparing to cross the Charles River and march on Lexington, presumably to arrest John Hancock and Samuel Adams, and then to march on Concord to seize his munitions. To maximize the chances of a warning reaching the countryside, Warren decided to send one messenger by land and one by sea. Around 9 p.m., the doctor dispatched William Dawes on the riskier mission to ride through the checkpoint guarded by the British sentries and to take the longer land route. An hour later, he sent Paul Revere on his way to the Charles River and to the surrounding countryside. Their dispatchment was successful and helped prepare the surrounding area for the coming war. In the months that followed, Warren worked tirelessly to organize and direct the American military efforts. His efforts did not go unnoticed because on June 14, 1775, he was commissioned Major General by the Provincial Congress. While other Sons of Liberty members, such as John Hancock, Samuel Adams, and John Adams, convened in Philadelphia as delegates to the Continental Congress, Warren set out for Boston, where the American forces were preparing to defend against a siege by the British. He ended up borrowing a musket to join the Battle of Bunker Hill. Both General Putnam and Colonel Prescott urged him to remain in the back and command the forces, but Warren argued that they would be more effective leaders. Thus, Warren marched out to fight on the front lines. As the fighting progressed and the British made several successive attempts to take the hill, Warren stood fast, even as he ran out of ammunition. As the British made their third attempt to accost the hill, he ordered the other militiamen to escape and continued fighting, only to be struck down by a musket ball to the head. It is speculated that a British officer, Lieutenant Lord Rodden, recognized him and took the shot. His body was stabbed with bayonets until unrecognizable, and he was eventually thrown into a ditch. Warren's death was viewed as an act of martyrdom and encouraged many on the American side to continue fighting. Had he survived, it is likely he would have been considered one of the Founding Fathers and possibly even gone on to serve in the newly founded Republic. If you have any questions about Dr. Joseph Warren, or if you have a suggestion for a future video we should do, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button.